Welcome to Patty's Aquatics and welcome to my fish room. So today what I want to do is another segment in my series of videos, the truth about dirty tanks. And what I'm going to talk about today is the resurrection jars and the food web. Now I have done numerous videos on not only the food web, but the resurrection jars. I've experimented with these things over the last two years or so, really deep diving into it really going all in, collecting numerous jars, putting them all in my tanks and creating food webs in the past. And I feel it's my responsibility since I have done this and have been promoting it and supporting it to really do this type of video, do a little bit more of a deep dive into it and really show you some of the research I have done more as of recently and why my mind has maybe changed a little bit on the subject. Now, there is a lot of inconsistencies when it comes to the resurrection jar and when it comes to really the directions and tutorial of how to do it, really much like the father fish method. Um, don't do water changes, do water changes, don't do water changes, uh, don't touch your tank. Uh, you need to do maintenance. Uh, the food web will feed your fish. Uh, you need to feed your fish. There's so many contradictions and so much confusion. It's no different with the food web and the resurrection jars. When I first started this, the resurrection jar was grab a handful of gunk off the bottom of a local waterway, throw it in a jar, essentially watch it for 30 days, then pour it in your aquarium. That's changed and changed and changed. And I can understand why there is so much confusion when it comes to a lot of the points of his method and explains why those videos of mine with the resurrection jars and the food webs consistently get so many views is because people are looking for answers. People are looking for really tutorial of what they're really supposed to do and to do it safely without harming the fish in their aquarium. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm really going to give you some of the breakdown of the research and experimenting and my opinion mostly of really what I found over about the last two years or so of doing this. So first and foremost, I do not support the resurrection jar anymore when it comes to the fish hobby, at least in the way that is being taught right now. I don't support it because myself and many other hobbyists, we spend lots of time and money into our aquariums and what we put into them. And you cannot guarantee what you're taking out of those jars and putting them into your tanks is not going to introduce something that's going to potentially wipe our tanks out. And that's just not okay to me. Now, Bottom line is, if you watch one of those older videos where it tells you to pour the contents of that jar into your aquarium, what are you introducing from that water? Now, there are numerous different types of waterways throughout the entire world of people that watch YouTube and see these videos. You can't guarantee that there's no pathogens or no uh, pollutants that you're introducing into your aquarium. Now, if you're very familiar with your local waterway, that's fine, but not everybody is. Now, what also with the parasitic side? Now, I know they say you observe the jar for 30 days. If anything's in there, you pull it out, which is true. But they also say that if there's anything that needs a host, it'll die off in that 30 days. You can't guarantee that. Um, no one can, and you're lying if you do. Uh, I've done research. There are pathogens that can survive longer than 30 days, so there is no guarantee. Also, what about other things that are in there? Yes, you can pull out dragonfly nymphs um, and things like that of nature and pull them out and not introduce them and that's fine. But like, what about planaria worms? Now, that's what really got me. Um, yes, I found them in my jars. I pulled them out. I introduced those jars all to my aquariums and I still got infested with planaria worms in just about every single one of my aquariums I pull, put that food web into. Now, because they can lay eggs on leaf litter and things that are within those jars and you still can introduce them. Now, there'll also be people that'll say, well, planaria worms, they're not all bad. They're not all killers. Um, they're just scavengers. And that is entirely true. But tell that to my blue dream shrimp population that was decimated by these planaria worm. Now, this is just another example of why you cannot guarantee what's in those jars is safe to put into your aquarium. Now, like I said, I don't support the resurrection jar in its current state, but there are safer options. So what are those safer options? 
example one, you want to find somewhere to culture some organisms, micro and macro organisms. Now, for me, what I did for one of my options here is I still went and collected a jar. I collected a big one. And I have this nature aquarium, which I've shown on my channel. And it's a two and a half gallon tank, but you could use any standalone aquarium or container that you can actually visually see everything within it. Now, I put substrate in it with plants and I poured that jar in there in its entirety with some tank water. And I've been watching it, but we're going to be watching it for a heck of a lot more than just 30 days. I'm on about month four right now. And I'm watching all these organisms grow. Now, the purpose of this tank is not to pour into my aquariums. I want all those little bugs and microorganisms within it. Maybe some leaf litter down the road, but for right now, what I'm doing is as the water evaporates, I'm adding fresh water. And then I'm starting to take a little bit of water out at a time and adding new water. So that water that was from that local waterway is no longer there. And quite frankly, you don't even have to use water from a local waterway. You can just grab leaf litter and put it in a container and fill it up with tank water, and that would be adequate enough as well. You want those micro and macro organisms to be able to culture in this container. That's step one. And step two is you want to collect a bunch of dead, dry leaves. Now, over time, as these organisms have cultured and grown in this container of yours, I'm going to soak these leaves and then I'm going to add that to a tank and then I'm going to take some of these organisms out of that um, nature tank or container that you're using and add them to your tank and then over time that food web can develop and you're doing it safe that way. Uh, the other option is if you don't want to do a nature aquarium and collect anything you can go find somebody that has already a culture of these things, or you can buy them from somewhere like Phillips Fishworks. Um, I've checked out his website. Uh, I will put it in the description of the video. Um, he does all the work for you. He cultures all this stuff. He sells bags of bugs and leaves, everything that you need, and you can put that directly into your aquarium and no need for anything else with this. And it's safe. It's not from the wild. You don't have to worry about pollutants or parasites. Um, so those are two big options. Now, the other thing to really talk about here is the food web. I completely support the food web. I think it's a hugely beneficial thing to be able to add to an aquarium, really any aquarium as well. It doesn't have to be a dirty tank. It can be a gravel or sand tank as well. Um, but there are some misconceptions with it, like to say that the food web itself can feed your fish and you no longer have to feed them is completely and utterly false, in my opinion. Now, once this food web is established, um, can it be an alternative food source for your fish? Yes. Can it be uh, an alternative bigger food source maybe for fry or smaller fish? Yes. But it can't feed your fish entirely. That's one. Two, like I said, you really need to establish this food web as well. You can't just put leaf litter and stuff into your aquarium and expect, boom, all of a sudden I'm going to have these bugs and microorganisms everywhere. Um, your fish will pick them off. You need to have hiding spots and areas for them to really be able to flourish and be able to grow and be able to cultivate. And that means having lots of like rocks and leaf litter and branches and everything at the bottom of your, of your substrate of your aquarium. So there are places for them to hide and move around and scurry around within your aquarium without being eaten. And that's like the biggest thing too, is you really need to really make sure that this food web can take off. Otherwise it's really pointless. The food web for me was never just about throwing some organisms in a tank and feeding your fish. It's always been more. Yes, that's part of their purpose, but their main purpose in the food web and in your aquarium is to break down waste. They're there to break down leaf litter, waste within your aquarium, to break it down small enough so that bacteria and fungi can also break it down to create nutrients for your plants and to be able to help them grow. And it creates this endless cycle. Like I've said numerous times in videos, one component helping the other to establish this ecosystem within your aquarium. And that's always been the purpose and the goal for me when it came to the food web. Now, the way that I'm suggesting the safer, safer option, it's going to take longer to establish this food web within your aquarium because when you take from the wild, 
obviously it's going to be seeded with lots of different organisms that are already there to break down that waste. Well, doing it the safe way, it's going to take longer, but you still will establish those organisms to be able to do it. So it's really going to come down to what option do you feel safer with? Do you want to go the route and go quicker and establish a food web by taking from the wild and risking potentially introducing something to your aquarium? Or do you want to take the safer side that's going to take a little longer, but you know you're not going to have to worry about anything being introduced to your tank? That's really what it comes down to, really, in my opinion. Now, if you do the resurrection jar the way that it's taught today, I think probably most people will be fine. But the problem is, like I said, People watch these videos from all over the world. There's no way to guarantee what is safe in one waterway is not going to be in another. And for that reason and that reason alone, I really feel like it's safer to really side on the safe side because, again, of how much time and energy and money people put into these aquariums. I really wanted to make this video because I have been supporting and promoting the Resurrection Jar for close to two years now. Um, from everything that I've seen in videos and added them into my own fish room by trying it in my channel by showing you the way that I've been doing it. I would feel terrible if someone watched my videos and did this and introduced something into their aquariums that would have potentially wiped out their fish after all the time and money and energy they put into it. So I'm all about transparency in my channel. Um, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to show you if a tank crashes or a fish dies. I'm not going to cover or hide things up. And that's the biggest thing with me and my channel. I'm really more documenting what I do. And like I said, I felt a responsibility to make this video to show people that I no longer support or recommend doing the resurrection jar the way that it is. Now, that being said, like I said, the food web, I think, is a highly beneficial thing to be able to add to any aquarium. And I still recommend that. And I will be introducing it to my Oscar tank in the near future. Once my nature aquarium has matured more and I feel comfortable adding some of those organisms within there and I want to see how that way goes. I also do plan on ordering from Phillips Fish Works in the near future as well to add to another aquarium and we'll see how those ways go. But either way, however you do it, just do your research. Research is key. Research is a true way to really find the truth to things sometimes besides watching a YouTube video. And I highly recommend that more than anything. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you did, hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to the channel. And always remember to think outside the box and take a step back in the nature. I hope to see you next time here at Patty's Aquatics.